In the Old Testament, the prophets portrayed God as a jealous and long-suffering husband, and Israel as an adulterous wife who worshipped other gods. God eventually decided to divorce Israel by sending her into exile and threatened to do the same to her sister nation of Judah. God is therefore described as a divorcee by Jeremiah and Isaiah. Malachi recorded that God hates divorce. In fact, no one knows the pain of divorce more than God himself, who suffered the infidelity of his wife Israel for hundreds of years. When the Pharisees asked Jesus about divorce, he wanted to talk about marriage. He reminded his questioners that marriage was a lifelong commitment. But when sin came along, God did introduce divorce because of your hard-heartedness. Human nature is still the same now, and Christians as well as Jews can be hard-hearted. When God's marriage ended, the divorce wasn't the sin. Divorce results from the sinful breaking of marriage vows by one or both partners. The problem in Jesus' day was that many men wanted easy divorces. One group of rabbis, the Hillelites, invented a no-fault divorce called any cause because of the Bible text they based it on in Deuteronomy 24, which allows divorce for a cause of nakedness. Everyone agreed that this meant adultery, but the Hillelites argued that the word nakedness by itself implies adultery, so the word cause meant a second type of divorce for any cause. They gave examples of a cause which included a single burnt meal. Another group of rabbis, the Shammaiites, stood vehemently against this. They said a cause of nakedness was a single phrase, so it only referred to one ground for divorce. They summarised their position by saying that Deuteronomy referred to no ground for divorce except for sexual immorality, i.e. adultery. This was the context for asking Jesus, is it lawful to divorce one's wife for any cause? Jesus answered by agreeing with the traditional interpretation, and he even quotes the Shammite slogan that Deuteronomy refers to no ground for divorce except for sexual immorality. Modern readers are likely to misunderstand this question. Unless you know about the any cause divorce, you'd think that they're asking Jesus whether he approves of divorce in general. In Jesus' day, everyone knew this legal jargon, because everyone was talking about this new any-cause divorce. However, once the debate was over, and the any-cause divorce had become the only type of divorce available, the technical term any-cause was forgotten very quickly. Faithfulness wasn't the only marriage vow. Jews also vowed to feed and to clothe and to love each other, based on the law in Exodus 21. These biblical grounds for divorce were agreed by everyone, and Jesus didn't refer to them or deny them. They are the foundation of the vows that Christ makes to his bride, to love, nourish, and cherish. And later they morphed into love, honour, and cherish. This means that those who neglected their spouse could be divorced. And this included neglect by abandonment or abuse, which were regarded as worse cases of neglect. This explains the scriptural basis for Paul's conclusion that an abandoned spouse is free to remarry. Unfortunately, both Jews and Christians moved away from this interpretation in the second century when they both forgot the origins and meanings of the any cause divorce. So they thought that Jesus and Shemaites taught divorce only for adultery. 
This means that the church was left with an unworkable divorce ethic where partners were locked into abusive marriages. Believers should not, of course, break any of their marriage vows, so in theory a pair of believers would never be divorced. But in practice, Christians commit adultery and abandon or abuse their spouses, or even get divorced when no vows have been broken. We should take care that the victims of divorce aren't regarded in the same way as those who break their vows. Because, after all, God is a divorcee. And also we should not regard divorce as a minor matter, given that Jesus was clearly against the breaking of any marriage vows. God bless.